Welcome back to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. And in the studio, Professor Krzysztof Jabłonka. And we're going to talk now about another major um, neighbour of, of, of Poland, that is Ukraine. Professor, Ukraine, a huge country now, a, a very important neighbour of, of Poland. There have been, I think, in history, several attempts to create a, a, a proper Polish-Ukrainian mm -hmm. sort of confederation or union. The first of these, I think, was in 1658. Could you say a few words about what led to this and what the result was? It should be added that Piłsudski, when he was in exile in Siberia, met a local doctor of Ukrainian origin who explained to him the difference between Ukrainians and Russians and thus also Poles. Piłsudski understood the aspirations of Ukraine. He realized that they were at an earlier stage than the Poles. Poles had great intelligence, even magnates. It was a certain degree of independence that the invaders had to reckon with. Only the Austrian monarchy treated Ukraine with respect. Piłsudski was able to impose on Poles a kind of respect for Ukraine, which caused Poland to treat the reborn Ukrainian state after World War I seriously establishing diplomatic contacts. Unfortunately, in 1918, not one, but two Ukrainian states were reborn, the latter being definitely anti-Polish. Piłsudski did not establish relations with this country. It was a country in the so-called Eastern Galicia, known as Halicina, which decided to attack Poland. We were at war with them until mid-1919. However, with the first country ruled by Simon Petliur, who led Ukraine's struggle for independence, we made two agreements. In April 1920, a military agreement, and later, a political agreement in which both countries considered themselves equal, the heirs of the former republic. According to this agreement, Poland came to Ukraine's aid when Ukraine started a war with the Bolsheviks for its liberation. Unfortunately, it ended in a catastrophe. Simon Budionis' powerful cavalry arrived at the Polish front, could not stand it anymore. In order to save the army and not allow to be surrounded, Polish troops have to withdraw. Eventually, however, Poles and Ukrainians defeated Budionis' army. The example of the defense of the Polish town of Zamość by the Ukrainian general Marko Bezruczko became a legend. This military commander drove Budioni's army away, and then the Poles and Ukrainians, in a powerful and the last in the 20th century horse-drawn charge, defeated the Bolsheviks, and we were given the land we had lost before. Unfortunately, however, the Poles did not have the strength to help the rest of Ukraine, the Kievan Ukraine, to regain independence. We were dependent on the supply of ammunition, and when France cut off our ammunition, supply, we were forced to end the war. For this reason, a truce was signed, and then the Treaty of Riga. Could we say some words about the earlier attempt at the Polish-Ukrainian Union in 1658. Previous relations between Poland and Ukraine were quite specific. In the 14th century, Ukraine as a state of Kiev and Ruthenia was broken up by a powerful invasion of the Mongols, from whom it was liberated by the Lithuanian army. A great battle of Kulikovo in 1380 took place, where the Tatars were defeated and the territories occupied by them were liberated by Lithuanians. When they made the deal with Poland, these areas became our common land. This was until the Union of Lublin was renewed. The Lithuanians broke off contacts with the King of Poland, insulted him, and the King, by his power and decision, transferred the Ukrainian territories to the Polish rule. He thus led to the unification of Poland with Ukraine. At that time, a very clear agreement was made. Lithuania and Belarus created the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, and Poland with Ukraine created the Crown. The Crown of the Kingdom of Poland was formed and representatives of Ukraine entered the common same of the Republic. Magnates living on these lands very quickly became Polish magnates. Almost all magnates are former Ruthenians. The situation of the peasants was completely the opposite. 
Polish peasants fled to Ukraine because they could be free there. In this way, a conflict arose between the magnates, so the nobility, and the Cossacks. However, it is worth noting that Poles and Ukrainians were members of both groups, so it was not a national conflict, but a social one. Eventually, the Cossacks got ennobled, but only partially, and it was still too late. The Treaty of Hadia was concluded in 1658, which established a separate, third state of the Republic of Poland, the Grand Duchy of Ruthenia. The opponents of this movement were both the magnates of the Republic, most of whom were Ruthenians themselves, and the Duchy of Moscow. This led to the eventual liquidation of this state, separated on the Dnieper River. The lands to the east of the Dnieper River went to the Duchy of Moscow, which finally destroyed the Cossack autonomy, and the land located to the west of the Dnieper River remained with the Republic. It is worth mentioning that today in Ukraine, only the part that survived under the Republic of Poland speaks Ukrainian. The part that got into the hands of the Grand Duchy of Moscow and later the Tsarist Russia speaks mostly Russian nowadays. Well, Professor, that's been fascinating. Thank you very much for coming to the studio. Thank you for watching Poland Daily History. Join us again when we look at more exciting episodes from the history of Poland.